Hey everybody, this is example number one in the steel design for welded, co uh, welded connections. The problem statement that we have is a flat tension member is connected to a gusset plate using two quarter inch longitudinal fillet welds made with E70X electrodes. Both the tension member and the gusset plate are of A36 steel. Calculate the available strength of the welded connection assuming that the tensile strength of the member is satisfactory. So here's our figure. We have our gusset plate half inch. We have our tension member 3 8 inch. And we have two fillet welds on each, one on each side of the tension member, five inches long. And then we have these quarter inch fillet welds. And they're, they're from E70 electrodes. So since, uh, since the welds are placed symmetrically about the axis of the member, this uh, connection can be considered a simple connection. So there's no additional load due to eccentricity. So that kind of simplifies things. So now the first thing we need to do is calculate the nominal strength of the fillet weld. And it's based on equation AISC J2-5. And uh, the FEXX represents the strength of the electrode in the equation. And the theta represents, uh, the, angle between, uh, represents the angle between the direction of the load and the axis of the weld. So in our case, since the load is parallel to the welds, this theta is going to be equal to zero. Which is, uh, which, which is also going to help simplify things. So we have the 0 0.66 times FEXX, and then we just plug in the theta equals 0, and it works out to the nominal strength of the weld equals 0 0.6 times the weld, the ultimate strength of the electrode. Uh, represents the ultimate uh, tensile strength of the electrode, so 0 0.6 times 70 KSI, that equals 42 KSI, is the nominal strength of the fillet weld, 42 KSI. So the next step will be to calculate the nominal load capacity of the weld. And so here's the equation for nominal load capacity. It equals 0 .0, 0 0.707 times the weld size, times the length of weld, times the nominal strength of the weld. So uh, for simplicity, we're, we're just going to assume L equals 1 inch in this case for right now. So we're going to get the strength that's in kips per inch. And then we'll convert it, uh, convert it into kips at the end of the problem. So assuming L equals 1 right now, uh, the length of the weld equals 1. Although in reality it's 5 inches, but for simplicity, we're assuming 1 inch for right now. So 1 inch. So it simplifies to 0 0.707 times the weld size times the nominal strength of the fillet weld. So 0 0.707 times quarter inch fillet weld uh, times 42 KSI. So we have a nominal load capacity of the weld is 7.42 kips per inch. So once we have that, uh, we can go ahead and move on to the LRFD and AST solution. So for LRFD, the design strength of the weld will be equal to the resistance factor times its nominal load capacity. So resistance factor of 0 0.75 times 7.42 kips per inch. That gives us a, a design strength for the weld of 5.57 kips per inch. So now we, that we got the strength of the weld, that's not the end of the problem. We have to check the stre strength of the base metal also. So since we have two different metals, uh, we have the gusset plate and the tension member, the smaller thickness metal will control, uh, which is a tension member, which is 3 8 inch. Let me just double check, going back. Yeah, so tension member is 3 8 inch and the gusset plate is half inch. So since they're the same, same material, we have to choose a smaller thickness because that's going to be the governing thickness. So then we go uh, check the base metal. And we're going to check the base metal shear yield and the base metal, metal shear rupture. So the, the formula for base metal shear yield is going to be equal to the resistance factor times 0 0.6 times the yield strength times the thickness of, uh, of the member. And this is uh, based on, give me one second. This is based on AIS equation J4-3. So this is AISC uh, equation J4-3. So we just plug in the numbers. The resistance factor in this case is going to be equal to 1.0 times 0 0.6 times 30, 36 KSI times the thickness of the tension member, 3 8 in. So we get 8.10 kips per inch is, is the sh shear yield strength. And then we're going to look at shear rupture strength. 
And this is based on equation AISC equation J4-4. AISC equation J4-4. And it's resistance factor times 0 0.6 times the ultimate strength uh, of the tension member times the thickness of the tension member. So remember we were told it's 836 material. So the yield is 36 KSI and the ultimate strength is 58 KSI. So we just plug in the numbers, 0 0.75 times 0 0.6 times 58 KSI times 3 eighths inch. That gives us 9.79 kips per inch. So then we're going to compare the three values, the shear rupture strength, the shear yield strength, and the weld strength, and pick the smaller one. So 9.79, 8.1, and 5.57. So that means the 5.57, which is the weld strength, is the governing one. So that's our governing strength. Uh, so then to get the strength of the connection, we take the, the, smaller, uh, the smallest design strength and multiply it by the length of the weld total length of the weld. So this is the weld strength which is governing. If it was if the other ones were smaller they would be in this place. Weld strength uh, governing and then we just multiply by the total length of the weld. So we have two five inch welds uh, longitudinal weld. So 5 plus 5 inch. So this comes out to 55.7 kips. Uh, this is the strength of the connection. Now we just uh, now we look at ASD, and the design and the process is similar. Just now, instead of multiplying by a resistance factor, we're going to divide by a safety factor. So we know that our nominal strength, nominal load capacity of the weld is 7.42 kips, and then we have to divide that by allowable safety factor, which is 2.0. So this gives us allowable strength of the weld of 3.71 kips per inch. So after looking at the strength of the weld, we have to look at, again, the base metal shear yield and the base metal uh, shear rupture. So base metal shear yield is, here's the equation, 0 0.6 times yield times the thickness divided by 1.5. So we just plug in the numbers and we get 5.40 kips per inch. And then we look at the base metal shear rupture. And here's the equation, 0 0.6 times the ultimate strength. Uh, times the thickness divided by 2, which is a safety factor. And plugging in the numbers, we get 6.53 kips per inch. So again, we're going to just compare the three values, 6.53, 5.40, and uh, 3.71. So 3.71, which is the weld strength, is the governing one. So the base metal shear is not governing in this case. So the weld strength is governing. So to get the strength of the connection, we just take the, well, uh, the, the governing strength and multiply it by the total length of weld. So 3.71 times 2 5 inch, uh, that should be 5 plus 5, not 5 multiple, 5 plus 5. 5 plus 5 inches, 10 inches, so that gives us 37.12 kips is our, the ASD strength of connection ba based on ASD. Let me just go back and make sure I did, I did 5 plus 5 in the LRFD. Okay, that's good. And then also I made a spreadsheet uh, for this question. Everything in yellow represents the inputs, and then everything else uh, represents outputs. Uh, I'll post this on the website. You guys can take a look at it, and I'll try to post this also on the Facebook page so you guys can take a look at the inputs and outputs. And this is the end of example number one in the steel design for weld connections. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, check out the website at engineeringexamples.net. And don't forget to uh, like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash engineeringexamples.